Will you rise to your feet and express your confidence in God and His Word with a shout offering, shout of victory this morning. Let's give the Lord a shout. Let's give Him a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you take that song from that place one more time, please? Hallelujah. Standing. God's word never fails. The Bible says it has been taken through fire seven times. It's already proven, already confirmed that it is true. So you and I are the one that needs to align ourselves. If it appears to be failing, it is not his word, it is us. My prayer is that the power of God's word this morning will enhance your position to begin to align with God's word so that all of his word in your life will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Are you excited this morning to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. I want to welcome everybody, those online and those on campus, you are welcome in Jesus' mighty name. My prayer is that the purpose of the word today will find great expression in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's wave our hands to God in worship. Thank you, Joe. Continue to wave those hands to God in worship. I want you to enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit. Wave your hands to God in worship this morning. Go ahead and wave them. Continue to wave your hands and worship unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and wave those hands. Now it's between you and God. I want to begin to worship him like only you and him. You are in his presence. Just you and him. Let's worship 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 him. Come on, let's give him praise this morning. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you, Lord. We honor your name. Thank you, Jesus. Receive all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I ask for your anointing over your word this morning. Father, let the purpose of your word find its expression in the life of your people. This morning, transform. This morning, open our eyes to see the mysteries behind the letters in the name of Jesus. Let no one remain the same in Jesus' precious name. Let's put our hands together for Jesus as we take our seat. You are welcome again in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I want to acknowledge the, the, the media department. They have a video of uh, Pastor Christian, Pastor Godwin. We do this to our pastors. So, hallelujah, when and during their birthday. Is that right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Congratulations and happy birthday to you, Sahama, in Jesus' precious name. The Lord will grant you grace of long life in good health in the name of Jesus. The lies of the devil concerning your life is already falling apart. It will not prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Honor to woman is due. Hallelujah. This morning we are going into taking Breakthrough Steps 2.0 on the series of Exploit of Faith. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as our prophetic focus, which will be rounding up today, James chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, 
does also fade by itself. If it does not have works, it's dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. This morning, by the help of the Holy Ghost, I want to break that down in a way that I believe many of us will be able to interpret and relate with in Jesus' mighty name. Does also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. We've learned a lot about walking through the word. Doing what the word of God says. Living a, a confident life or living by what the word of God says. For example, living by not saying I am sick as a Christian. Living by not behaving or acting or responding as if you are broke, even when you can't say it's broke. But this morning I want to look at works in the natural, the other works that is required. We've learned a lot, I believe. There is no hand, there is no time to graduate from the school of faith. So there is no end, we'll continue to learn. But we'll learn a lot about the works about doing what the Word of God says. What I'm also going to be teaching is in the Word, but it's not what we pay a lot of attention to. That is natural works or physical works because it's not enough to do the spiritual works and expect results. There are natural steps, natural responsibilities that we need to accept there are things we need to do that prayer will not do for us. Confession of God's word will also not do for us. And when we don't do all these things, they stand to frustrate every effort of prayer or every effort in spirituality. That is what you need to practically do. Hallelujah. So it's a totally different thing to believe and have faith but there are breakthrough steps that you need to take that will lead you to tangible proofs. So you are not just going to believe. You are going to take steps. You are going to operate in wisdom. Spiritual steps or spiritual or scriptural steps are not substitute to natural responsibilities. That you can pray, you can confess God's word. You never say anything negative. Nobody hears anything negative from your mouth. But there are no substitute to some other steps that you need to take in life. It's good to pray, it's good to study the word of God. But there are some other things which we're going to be looking into this morning. To get results. Listen, spirituality does not substitute responsibility. Spirituality is not a substitute to natural responsibility. So we are looking at some natural steps. They, are, they also are embedded in the spirit. But I want to approach them from the natural so that we all can relate with them. Number one, number one enemy of faith, no matter what you believe, no matter how much you confess God's word, you can read the Bible every day. If you don't overcome the spirit of fear, it will sabotage your faith. It would sabotage your results. If you do not learn to overcome the spirit of fear, because on your path to fulfillment in life, you are going to experience and see things that will require courage and boldness. Because you will encounter situations that will be discouraging. That is the truth that's natural to life. I want to begin by letting you know this. Make up your mind to be courageous. Because you will encounter discouraging things in life. 
It is natural. It's not only you. Now, fear is a spiritual thing. I've said that a lot of time. But I want to break it down in a way we can relate with. It, it does not make sense because you are a Christian to expect to succeed without oops, without bumps, without situations of life. You will encounter situations several times on your path that you will become discouraged. You will go through situations where you feel like giving up. Those that are succeeding are those that refuse to give up. Only if you can sit with them, they will tell you what they have to overcome. If you don't overcome the spirit of fear, which in the most part Satan will bring, which also your mind can conjure and concur together because of things that you see. In the path of success in life, you will see situations that all you feel like doing is to give up. Hallelujah. Fear, that is why it's the opposite of faith. Fear is an hindrance or an obstacle to living the life of faith. And Satan uses fear to stop people's faith so that you do nothing or you give up. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, the Bible says, This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. Now, God just appointed Joshua to take over from Moses. And uh, yet, this is what God has to tell him. This book of the Lord, the Bible, shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do, according to all that is written in it. He said, for then you will make your way prosperous. Now, this is the truth. Take it or leave it. I pray you take it. You are responsible for making your way prosperous. It is not up to the devil. Now, I know we blame the devil for a lot of things, but God already gave a way of escape. God already gave a way to circumvent, to avoid the hoops, the traps of the devil. He said, for then you will make your way prosperous. Nobody is to blame but you if it is not happening. He said, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. We've talked about the place of confession. Have you wondered, God gave him the Bible, he was charging Joshua, he was telling him to begin to confess the word. There is so much power when we speak the word. He said, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to comply. Then, when you do, you shall make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. So you are responsible for your own success. That's why I want to start by letting you know that you need to overcome the spirit of fear. You need to embrace, ask for the spirit of courage to overcome fear so that you will not stop, so that you will not give up, so that you will not surrender the mandate of your life to the devil. And I say, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Many of us will have great aspirations, great visions for our life, but what we have not reconciled in real time is the fact that that place you desire to be in life, it will take courage to get there. You, you have to understand the demands of courage that is required for where you are going. So that when you encounter situations, they are normal. You know just the natural thing is to be courageous. You want to get to the top in life, you need to be strong. You need to be strong emotionally. You need to be strong mentally. You need to be strong physically. Things will come to you. I read one test that somebody sent to me some two, three weeks ago, which I read, which I appreciate a lot. Um, after we shared, uh, Mojis Thanksgiving said, uh, I didn't know you, all this were happening throughout this period and you come to church, you need to be strong. You can, you can lead people if you yourself are going to fall apart emotionally. 
you can be strong. You cannot become a manager where you work. I'm not talking in the church. Where you work, if you are not emotionally balanced. If because something happened to you, you show up in the office, everybody knows something has gone wrong. You are not ready to lead. You are also not ready to pastor. If whatever happens in your life will take you days to overcome it. Yes, you are praying to move forward. That may be the only thing hindering you. So God told Joshua, be courageous. He said, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God is with you. Now, when people live in fear, it's not that God is not with them, but fear makes them to be unconscious of God's being with them. God is with you, but will fear allow you to enjoy that? So it's almost impossible to accomplish anything in life without some level of courage. Without some level of courage, winners or champions are courageous people. There was a book, Pastor I saw in my hand, I was reading one day. The title of the book is Clergy Killers. He said, Sir, he said, you are reading this book. You are making it difficult for us to, when you are reading this book, you are making it difficult for us to be pastors. When the, I said, there are clergy killers. Strong physically, strong mentally, strong emotionally, strong spiritually. I can talk forever on being strong physically and being strong emotionally. If your body breaks down, your emotions will break down. It is irresponsible of any leader, anybody destined for greatness, not to know how to take care of their bodies. I can tell you the workout schedule that I've read, it may be mo most of them, the past four presidents in America. President Bush, the junior, will bike miles every morning, biking. The current president will bike every morning. Obama will play basketball every week. They need to be strong to be able to handle their responsibility. President Bush, the junior, he, when he was told the time he has to be waking up for security briefing as a president, he started sleeping at 9 p.m. He said that's the only way he could cope in the morning. I don't know how much you follow politics. There were several times they woke him up to sign some bill into law. It would have, because Congress didn't agree until after midnight, but he was asleep. <laughs> so they passed to him. There was a particular one at the early stage of his presidency. It was about budget breakdown uh, to stop the economy running or something. They said when they gave it to him, it just, they, just, they searched it to him, he just signed his room. He went back to sleep because he was asleep. He said that was the only way you could be functioning in the morning. Part of responsibility in life is to study your body. If your body breaks down, you will break down emotionally. Praise the Lord. The reason why I don't drink hot water, I don't, I don't drink cold water, I've not taken cold water in over 12 years. Cold, no. It doesn't feel good, yes, but it's not good for my voice because I speak. I see people singing, chewing highs. Responsibility. Do I like to be drinking hot water in the summer? No. Does it feel good? No. But I need my voice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Responsibilities. So bumps are natural in life. It's like you are driving from point A to point B. No matter how smooth the road is, you will hit some bumps. That's a place the car will do like this. So the, if you are going to move forward in life, 
you will see discouraging things. Please let me minister to your soul this morning. I have some things in my mind that can be a blessing to you. You may be down today, but you are not out. That is the truth. The Bible says in Proverbs 24 and verse 16, for a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. That you are down today does not mean you are out. God has not counted you out. Don't rule yourself out. You can emerge from anywhere you are and still become the best that God ordained for your life. Who could say, who could tell that Joseph was heading to the palace in prison? Who could tell that the road to the palace for Joseph was as a slave in Potiphar's house? There is no success stories without hurdles. So you can overcome every situation. Things may appear slow in your life, but you may be gathering space. Stop comparing yourself negatively to people just because it appears they have gone ahead. Devil will use that to sink you. If you are not careful, you will relapse into bitterness and anger. As a matter of fact, what is likely going to happen is that you will now not see the way out. Stop comparing yourself negatively to people because things. And if they are the very not smart one that uses what, what, what they have and uses, uses it around you a lot, avoid them. The Bible says Matthew chapter 19 and verse 30, but many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. You may be number last today, but you may be, you may be the one becoming first tomorrow. Amen. You can overcome every situation if you don't give up. Also, there is nothing you are going through in life that does not have an expiration date. There is no problem that is meant to be forever. The Bible says, Psalm 30 and verse 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. If you are going to fulfill your destiny, you must not allow fear to rule your heart. Fear kills productivity. It kills creativity. It kills vision. Fear drowns people. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 32 to 37, you know the story, Goliath and the army of uh, the Philistine and the army of Israel. For 40 days, I, I researched into it yesterday, Goliath was 9 feet and 9 inches tall. 9 feet, 6 cubits and 1 span equals 9 feet and 9 inches, 9.9 .9 is his height. He used his towering figure and his mouth to drown the army of Israel, including the king. Let any one of you come here. I will give his flesh to the bird in the hair. The Bible said they were dismayed. For 40 days they could not lift a hand, yet they are covenanted people. The Holy Ghost said to me yesterday, any one of them could have killed Goliath like David if they had embraced the right spirit. Any one of them, because David killed Goliath by the covenant, God's covenant with the Israelites. But fear paralyzed them on the spot. Nobody came out, including the king, the commander-in-chief. The Bible says in verse 17 of 1 Samuel chapter 32, Then David said to Saul, So when David was brought into sin, he said, Let no man's heart fail because of him. 
So maybe he knew, maybe he saw it in them, but he knew that was what was wrong. Let no man, you can't imagine a boy that has never fought before encouraging the king. Let no man sat fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And so I said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth. He, he was a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep. Now he began to tap into testimonies of God's faithfulness in his heart. The testimonies you call small in your life, they are the platform for the great ones. They are the one God needed. They are your support. They are your reference point for the next level that you are going in life. That is why there is no small testimony. There is no testimony that is small. If you can do it and God did it, you are ungrateful to believe to it. Can you imagine that David will need killing a bear and a lion to win the war for a nation? He drew courage. Many people are frustrated today, drowning in their own thinking. They, they cannot, not one thing that God has done for them would they remember to say, God that did this one. They can't remember anything except what he has not done. David gave a testimony of killing a bear. That was what was in his resume to the king to lead the army of Israel. Your servant used to keep his servant's father's sheep. And when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, number one attribute in David, in, in, in David, he was not a fearful man. Because there's somebody that, does, that is not fearful to run after a lion. Because the lion caught the animal and was going, he ran after the lion and took the lion. Lion had never seen anybody chase him before. So when somebody came, Lion too took off. <laughs> if you are going to, I, I, I'm not talking about succeeding, you are able to pay your bills. That's not what I'm saying this morning. Because sometimes we shortchange ourselves by redefining success as just ability to get by. You will need to overcome the spirit of fear. Fear is from the pit of hell. Anything that makes you fearful is not true. It's from the devil. And the devil offers nothing good. If it comes with fear, just throw it away. No, this is Satan trying to set you up. Fear is not of God. Then he testified. Then he said, the Lord who deliver me from the power of the lion and the power of the bear will deliver me. Any one of them could have killed Goliath, but they succumbed to the spirit of fear because Goliath intimidated them. There are situations that may intimidate you in life, but if you are going to make it big in life, if your faith is ever going to come alive, you have to overcome the spirit of fear. Anytime you have privilege, opportunity to, to sit with some people that have gone through, that you see some result in their life, please maximize the time. Ask them questions about how they arrive at where they are. Don't take it lightly. Don't just go there and be chatting basketball and wrestling. It's time not well spent. I've been relating very closely to the man called Ken Berwick, the founder of Seneca. That organization is now 37 years old. It started 37 years ago. I've seen with governors and presidents, not one or two, several past presidents. I've been asking questions, Ken, how did you get here? How did this start? I've been spending a lot of time because now I'm pastoring, it's not a church, but principles of advancement in life is the same. Courage is courage, whether you read it in the Bible or you read it in any other book. Boldness is boldness. Order is order.
Only if you sit with him. Well, okay, look at that organization today now. There are these thousands of people here and there. Only if you sit down with him and let him tell you how and what he's been through. Praise the Lord. In verse 10, 1 Samuel 17, verse 10. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man. We may fight together. When Saul and all Israel had this word of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. But Joseph needed to overcome the affair of Goliath to come into prominence. If you are going to enter into prominence in life, you're going to have to learn how to be on top of your emotions. Not everything, every small thing that happens will make you sad. If your emotion can crack like eggshells on anything you see, you are not ready. So maybe you are not emotionally ready for what you are praying for. For 40 days, they couldn't lift any hands. Now, the children of Israel were going to the promised land. There were giants there. Now, that was God's promise for them. Now, the question you want to ask yourself, why did God take them to the land that has giants? Why can't God find somewhere else that there is no opposition and just relocate them there? But their promised land is either you go for your promised land or you leave it for the giants. There are giants or maybe giants in everyone's promised land. Now, if there are giants on the, uh, in the promised land, there are giants on the way. Only God knows the amount of blood that was shed in their journey out of Egypt to get to the promised land. So number one, you need to be strong. Number two, you need to take bold steps. I'm not talking about spiritual steps now. I'm talking about do natural things, physical things. Engage in projects. Engage in investments. Spend your money wisely. Prioritize your life and finances. Let me start by saying this. Cars are not investment. So if the car you drive gives you any sense of fulfillment, you have missed it. Buy a new car from the dealership and drive it out. Go back the next day. It's lost $5,000. Try it. Just tempt them to go back. Say, you don't want this car again. I want you to take it. Find out if it won't cost you $5,000 overnight. <laughs> so take both steps along things that can secure your future. Things that may not make you to be praying. Have you wondered, have you found out why there was always fight for land in the Bible? Are, have you wondered why what God gave his people were lambs? Lambs, lambs. Because the most real investment is real estate. You may have to save for it. You have to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you can save. People that don't save don't have plans. I said on Thursday, there are some people, their house, they are wearing it as clothes. Some people, their house, and things that can make their life easier, they are eating it with food. Because they buy any kind of food, anything. They eat anywhere, anything. Buy things you need, buy things you don't need. Those things will hinder you from making, from investing in projects. Now, I thank God for the life of this guy, Ken Berrick, that I told you. Great organization, over 150 locations in California and some locations out of state, thousands of employees. 
But he said something to me that humbled me. He said, Pastor Isaac, I'm going to teach you those things if you will teach me that thing. I said, what is that thing? He said, what did you call it that time? I said, what? He said, you, I said, covenant, spiritual. He said, yes. He said, you will teach me that covenant. Thing. He said, I wish I was wise like you. I said, what do you mean? We just started. He said, no, I just, my eyes just opened to real estate in the last three years. He said, we were renting all our locations. They just bought their first building about two years ago. When they were in escrow, he told me. He said, I wish we had been buying. He now said, you are going to teach me how you knew to be buying. Especially you are a church. Church shouldn't buy. Church should rent a hall, rent a hotel, and do some things. So he said, you have to teach me some of those things. I said, Bible taught me. If you are, now you are praying, which is faith. You are fasting, which is by faith. You are confessing the word, which is by faith. Now, there are other things you need to do. You need to have an investor mentality. Prayer won't do this for you. Prayer will not do this for you. And, you know, we're in California now for the purpose of all of us that live in California. You know, real estate is more expensive here than every other state. Is that right? But do you know that the wisdom there is this? You buy a house in California in five, six, seven years, people in Texas may not save for that house till they retire. They may never be able to save for the equity on that house till they retire. So it's wisdom to buy a house here even if you finish your salary. Even if you no longer have savings. I've shared several times, when we moved from our church in Oakland, which is a commercial building, which was in Oakland, when we moved, we spent about nine years in that building, I think. We moved there 2009. We moved out 2015. How many years was that? Six. We had a net check, net, of $585,000 after the sale of that building. What if we were renting? What if we were renting? First of all, we would have rented that building more than the $6,000 we were paying for it. The rent would have been more than $6,000. So you must take practical steps of managing your money well. If you don't have control over how you spend, that may be the devil in your life. Not Satan itself. Spending. Appetite to buy. May be your devil. It may not be Satan. That may be your own Satan. Because you may not be able to have anything tangible to show for years of working. You may deplete all of them. Target, Ross, Mrs., J.C. Penny. Or you can eat restaurants, McDonald's, Chick fil A, <laughs> movie. You know, one of the reasons why I don't even like movie. Who is paying to watch me? <laughs> if somebody is paying me and be watching me and perform, I will perform. But as long as they are paying ten ten dollars at the entrance, we will watch anything together. You know when I, I told you that movie, I right? was the name, the black one, Black Panther, black Panther right, <laughs> or Wakanda. <laughs> I went to watch it and I didn't tell anybody because I didn't know the outcome. I knew I may not survive it. <laughs> Forty minutes into it, now I saw some people turning and be flying like car, like play. I don't understand what, uh, these are these human beings. Then I carry my stuff, I left. I went to them, I said, I want my money back. <laughs> yes, I pay almost $10. So they said, what? I said, what is your customer satisfaction guarantee policy? They said, I watch, I said, only 40 minutes. <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> They really look at me, he passed me to somebody else. Is that what I want? I want my refund. I'm not watching again. 
<laughs> but when they don't seem to understand what I was saying, I said, well, God have me. So God forgive you. You took my $10 today. It's not going to happen again. I left. It's okay. You can watch it. But I told myself, what will watching it add to my life? First, I wasted $10. Then I wasted two hours. If I used that two hours to read one chapter in the Bible, it can transform my life. So projects, tangible things, both steps. Now, things that will stretch you. Things that will stretch your faith. What does, what, what does that mean? Don't limit your effort to only the things you can handle. That's why God's faithfulness exists. God's faithfulness is what comes in when your own ability and when your own strength fails. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Let me read from the New Living Translation. He says, each time he said, my gracious favor is all you need. My power works better in your weakness. So when you got yourself into trouble of projects and you don't know how to handle it again, first you have no choice but to depend on God. Number two, you have to pray. Then God's faithfulness will kick in. Then the project will become a success. Then there is a tangible proof on the ground. That is why we never look at what we have as a church to embark on any project. If we're looking at what we have, we'll still be at Capwell. We'll still be, God bless Pastor, 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 we'll still be at the hotel. We never look at what we have because God's faithfulness, we can always count on it. But God's faithfulness is not needed until you get to a point of weakness. When you double into a project that if God does not show up, anything can happen. It will show up. It says, my gracious favor is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. In your weakness. Now, you don't, you, you don't want to get to a point of weakness. You don't want to see God's faithfulness. Because you don't need it. You don't want to get to a point where you will not know what to do. You don't want to see God step, step, stepping in. That's why I share every testimony of things God is helping us to do in here. We will be in escrow to close on the church building. In three, four hours, I might still be short $200,000. And I'll be smiling. Counting on God's faithfulness to come through. And he always he said, my strength, my power works better in your weakness. So don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid to run into challenges. Get into projects. Invest your life into projects, tangible things. Don't wait when you are super comfortable to try anything. Take a risk, if I use it that way. I don't consider it a risk, but you can take it, you can call it a risk, right? Even if you think it's risk, take it. Take a chance. What if it does not work? What if it works? You may take four may not work. One that works may give you more than what you need and wipe out the pain of four that did not work. Do you know that before we came here to this building, you know we tried several buildings that we didn't, because we didn't get it, so there's only to talk about it. We tried some other buildings. We saw one big building at Eggenberger. Huge building, you remember that building? We couldn't get the building. You remember the building? We couldn't get the building. But there's not, nobody's talking about that anymore. Nobody is talking about what we did not get. Nobody cares about what you miss. What you hit, the target you hit, will wipe out the memory of what you miss. Number three. Put behind 
your past failures or disappointments or losses, you can call it. Put them in the back. Forget about it. Don't let your past losses, your past disappointment, your past failures, don't let it dictate your future. Your pain of the past, losses of the past, they are only as powerful as you allow them. You may have to overcome those to make it to where you are headed in life. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. We will not allow you to be tempted beyond that what you are able. Now, what does that mean? He said, but with the temptation, we also make a way of escape for you. Now, listen, what, do I, what, what does that mean? It's emotionally comforting, but it's not scriptural, but it's comforting to feel like what you are going through is the worst. To curry people's sympathy, people feeling for you, people rallying around you, people coming to say sorry, I know what you are going through, but let me tell you the truth that you may not like, that doesn't change the situation. Stop putting yourself in a position where people feel sorry for you if you want a change. Don't ever get to a point and be asking people, you don't know what I'm going through. You didn't even see me and you didn't call me. You don't know what is happening. What is happening? The Bible says it is common. It's not only in your house. The Bible says it's happening everywhere. Did you understand what I'm saying? Put your past losses behind you. Don't, I'm talking about if you are going somewhere in life, don't put yourself in a position where people are telling you sorry. Talking about losses. In Genesis chapter 26 from verse 12, Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continue prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had great possession of flocks and possession of herds and great number of servants. So the Philistine envied him. Now, now let's move to verse 17. Verse 19, because of time. Also, Isaac dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerah quarrel with Isaac and uh, Isaac's headsman and the water is ours. So he called the name of the, of the well a sec because they quarreled with him. So they took it from him. Well was needed to survive in those days for irrigation. To feed the animals which was the source of their wealth and to farm. So you don't have a well, you don't prosper. So he dug and he hit well. When you hit well in those days, like you eat gold. So they took it from him. He called it, they took this from me, he named the place, he left. That was it. Then they dug another well. And they quarreled over that one also. So he called his name Sitna. He dug the first one, they took it from him. He dug the second one, he didn't kill himself. He didn't start complaining. But he said, and he moved from there, verse 22, and dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. And he called his name Rehoboth. Because for now the Lord has made a room. You never let your past losses hinder your journey to success in life. You've lost some money. It's not the reason why you won't invest again. You try a business, it didn't work. It's not the reason why you're no longer doing business. They frustrated you from your last employment. It's not the reason why you won't find another one. Somebody you trusted took away your trust and betrayed you. It's not the reason not to trust somebody else again. These things may hinder you in life. And lastly, this morning, because of time, 
Avoid the spirit of jealousy and bitterness. Bitterness destroys. Jealousy, we always need to, 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 now, what does that mean? You just feel a little bit sad when you hear somebody's testimony or when something happens in somebody's life because it's what you need. But that's not how to get it. Avoid the spirit of jealousy and bitterness. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31, the Bible says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And Hebrews 12 and 15 says, Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up cause trouble. So bitterness cuts people off from grace. He said, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. There's a story in scripture where jealousy turns somebody, and bitterness turns somebody to a murderer. Genesis chapter 4 from verse 3. And I'm going to close with this. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. So both of them offered something to God. And the Lord respected Bel and his offering, but not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you don't do well, you know in Bible's days, if you give an offering, it's, this, it's on the result. The same day you will see the result. All of, everybody will see it. Because it comes in sacrifice, you burn animals on the altar. So if the smoke is black, it's not accepted. If it is blue, it's accepted. So everybody is open result. So when I'm going home, I know Pastor Godwin's resort. He knows my own. <laughs> because smoke can't be contained. Everybody will see it going up in colors. Is it that black or blue? So he got mad. Now, if you're mad, why can't you get mad with God? God is the one that determines these things. Maybe somebody shared testimonies and you just got mad. Satan is setting you up. Now, see what happened. Now, verse 8, Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know, am I his keeper? And said, what have you done? Because God saw him. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me. Now, the, 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 the summary of this is this. Jealousy does not help you forward to becoming who you want to be in life. Bitterness does not take you there. And all of this put together can frustrate your effort in faith. So it's good to have faith, but we need these practical steps. Things, other things that can frustrate our confession. Otherwise, you can confess the scripture, which is, which, which is faith. You can confess the scriptures. You may never say anything negative in your life, but you need to deal with jealousy and anger. You need to, de you need to take both steps. You need to act on something. God has laid some business in your hand. Start it. What if it does not work? What if it works? Every great enterprise that we see in our world today started small. They didn't look like they would make it. I was living to this guy, the founder of Amazon recently. He said 30 years ago when Amazon started, there was no internet.
there was no e-commerce when he started Amazon. So nobody saw, nobody knew how it would succeed. Succeeded. And it's still succeeding. God lay a vision in your heart. You have checked it with God's word. You have prayed about it. The Holy Spirit tells you it's good. Go ahead with it. Doesn't matter who doesn't agree with it. The Bible said, don't despise the days of small beginning. Rise to your feet. Do not despise the days of small beginning. I want you to ask yourself, within yourself, from what we heard this morning, what are those things that I'm going home with that will begin to make some commitment between you and God? Things to work on, areas that you need to take bold steps, areas that you need to make decisions, make investments to overcome hunger. Begin to express that between you and God this morning. Whatever, anything that the Lord said to you in the course of this message this morning. Open your mouth and enter into a covenant of commitment. It's a commitment between you and God, commitment to the fulfillment of your own destiny. Enter into the covenant. I will not let the spirit of fear over, overcome me again. I will be strong. I will be bold. I will not be easily intimidated. I will be courageous. Open your mouth and begin to ask the Lord in prayer. Open your mouth and begin to ask God in prayer. Open your mouth and ask God in prayer. Open your mouth and begin to ask Jesus in prayer. Be determined to overcome the spirit of fear. Tell fear the blood of Jesus is against you. From today, I trample over you. From today, I have overcome you. From today, you will no longer control my life. You will no longer limit my life. I overcome the spirit of fear, the spirit of intimidation. I receive the spirit of courage. I am strong. I am courageous. Ask the Lord to guide you into this, with the spirit of counsel into what to do. Step to take. Empower me to make bold step. Bold decisions. Open your mouth and begin to ask the Lord in prayer. Open your mouth and begin to ask God in prayer. Open your mouth and begin to ask God in prayer. Open your mouth and begin to ask Jesus in prayer. Open your mouth and begin to ask God in prayer. Make a commitment to your own destiny with God. Enter into a pact with God and your destiny. I will no longer let fear rule my life. I will no longer let envy and bitterness rule my life. I receive grace for bold decisions, bold steps. I take grace this morning. I pray for the spirit of grace, wisdom, for direction, for projects, for businesses, directions, witty inventions, profitable ventures. In Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of the living God, we thank you this morning. Lord, let your anointing go with your word in the heart, in the spirit, and in the mind of your people. In the name of Jesus, empower them to take necessary steps that is required to have result in life. Lord, let each one's testimony bring glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. If you have joined us for service this morning, you have never given your life to Jesus. That is where it all begins. You need to declare him as the Lord 
and Savior of your life. Bible say, if you believe in your heart, you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So I'm going to lead you in this simple prayer of salvation this morning. Whether you are in church this morning or you are online, I want to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that you are the Son of God. You gave your life to save my life. Bible say, if I believe in my heart and I declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, I will be saved. I declare with my mouth that you are the Lord of my life. Write my name in the book of life. I am born again in Jesus' mighty name. My prayer is that the power of God that has brought you will keep you and establish you in the faith. In Jesus' mighty name. Please send a text with yes, Jesus, one word, yes, Jesus, together to the number on your screen or the email on your screen so that we can follow up with you. Send us some of your information. We know you have prayed this prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Our church is now open. Also make another step of fellowship with us. Our addresses and contact and everything is on your screen. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's wave our hands together. Let's wave it unto Jesus. Let's wave our hands to the Lord. To him be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's take our seat. It is time for us to worship God with our offerings and our tithe this morning. Let us package our tithe and our offering this morning. Your tithe is the 10% of every blessing of God in your life, every check, every time God blesses you with the income. Your tithe is the 10th part of it. Let us package it. Let us worship God with it this morning. 